Hey there, and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna move on from the interface that we implemented previously, and we're gonna use this straight away via the level manager so that we can then start recycling our floors and have a constant uh, level and road being spawned ahead of us. So to do this, we're gonna go straight to the level manager class. I would do that through the blueprint folders or just click over here. We then want to navigate over to the event graph. I'm just gonna remove everything else for now. We don't need these in here. Uh, what we do want is the level bounds. We need to just remember that this needs to be overlapping, so overlap all dynamic. Um, and with that set correctly, we're gonna go down to on component begin overlap. So when this overlaps any object in the level, what we want to do is we're gonna immediately call that interface, or at least see if we can access that interface. So off of the overlapped actor, we want to return the parent of that ob object. So again, like we did previously, we wanna make sure this is a message from the BPI spawner, so return parent. Now, where I said previously this is a safe method, it still is, um, and of course, if the object doesn't have the interface implemented, then this won't do anything. If it does, then it will return the parent. But of course, we also want to make sure that we can call the correct function on the, the spawner object. So we do need to do a safety check here. So what we want to do is we wanna find out whether or not the parent is valid. So we'll do an is valid check here because even if this returned null um, and we tried calling the next function from this, it would still try and do that. Uh, this is the only bit which is really safe. Anything you do with the information or the information that doesn't exist retrieved from this is still obviously gonna be prone to errors um, and no references and things. So we'll pull off of here and we'll call the spawned actor hit bounds. And of course, we're only gonna do this if this is valid. So we'll just plug that in. And again, I'm just gonna quickly reroute some of these nodes to make them a little bit tidier. The only argument that this takes is the actor, which is now out of bounds, which of course we already have access to, which is the other actor. So we're gonna plug that in here as well. And that is everything done. So now this is going to account for anything which is gonna be coming outside of the level bounds. Now in this series, I'm only gonna be covering obstacles and floors, but of course, if you wanted to add in things like or different types of obstacles, enemies, um, collectibles, things like that. This, the reason I've done it this way is this is gonna be a very generic approach, which should work for any class, which makes it a lot more modular and easy to add things in and save you time that way. So if we go into the spawned actor hit bounds, remember in the base class, we're not doing anything. So if we go back in and also check what's happening in the floor spawner, because that's the only other one we have at the moment, we have, uh, then actually I've just realized we've not actually done anything here. So we'll do that now. We'll implement the logic of, of what happens when a floor is hit by the level bounds. So like we've done previously, we want to override the function in the base class. So we're gonna to go to functions, override and spawned actor hit bounds. Uh, now, because this doesn't have an output, obviously it's gonna put this in the event graph for us, which is perfectly fine in this case. And all we want to do is the actor that we've just hit, we're gonna pull off of this and we want to set the location, like I said, rather than destroying things uh, to save on memory and to try and keep the performance hit down of spawning and destroying things, we're just gonna move the location. So we're gonna set actor location. We're gonna split the structure pin. So the new location, we just will split this so we can get the X, Y, and Z separately. Of course, we're gonna leave the Z to be zero. We want to get the location of the rear tile. So get actor location. So this is gonna be very similar to what we did previously in the logic just above. And again, we're gonna split this so we have the X, Y, and the Z. So for the X axis, we want to add a float to a float. So float plus float and that is simply going to be the tile size. Now again, there's gonna be a fix we do here later because I haven't actually covered the, the bug that I'm expecting to happen to try and keep things simple and not confuse things. Uh, we'll come back and add some extra logic here when we need it, but for now this should work visually at least perfectly fine. And we are going to make sure that we stay on the same Y axis as well so that we're not moving anything around. And like I said, because the Z is very simple, it's gonna be zero. I'm just gonna leave that hard coded to zero. But of course, if you wanted, you could always just plug in the Z axis because unless something really weird is happening, it should always be zero on the Z as well. In fact, I'm just gonna do that, sorry. <laughs> Why not? Just so everything is plugged in and hooked up and that it's a little bit more visual, we can see what's happening. And then of course, now that we have moved this to the back of the road, this is going to be the new rear tile. So I'm just going to grab a reroute node here and we're gonna set another, the reference to uh, rear tile. So we'll set rear tile to be this one and we'll plug that in there. And that's pretty much the logic over. Um, like, like usual, I'm just going to tidy these up a little bit though. Okay, and that is it. So now when a tile goes out of bound, it's going to find what the current rear tile is. So the one at the end of the road at the moment, find out its location, add the tile size, so the offset against it, 
move it back that distance and attach itself to the end of the line. And we're gonna make it the current rear tile and this is obviously gonna loop around. So if all of that is working, what we should hope to see now is that we don't have any of these gaps in the road. Um, and as the roads start going through, uh, we're gonna to need to angle the camera something a little bit here, but you can see that they're popping back and becoming the end of the road again. So of course, if we had the camera in the right place, uh, or maybe I've set the offset for the start of the level to be a little bit further back than it should, then what we'd hope to see is that there's no gap there. So we'll look into why that's happening when we get through the, the polish and uh, fix phase of the series. But we can see the actual logic itself is working, we just haven't put things in the right location. And if I eject this, we can just double check. So we can see, there we go. So as it's getting back and hitting the thing, it's then being moved to the front of the queue. Uh, the other thing I did is, um, it seems like I've put these two close to each other, so we can see there's some Z fighting there. So again, this is going to be more of a visual thing, so I will leave that for the polish and tidy up section. You can do as you want with that. Basically, all I did in my final version was I just made the the middle floor a little bit thinner, uh, just because I like the, the visual of that anyway, to have that kind of curve looking on the side, um, and it helps fix that problem. So just to quickly show what I've done on the static mesh, where these are scaled at 10 by standard. I think on the Z axes, I just put this to like 0.5, left these as 10, and that way you get this kind of curb. You can't see the Z fighting, and it just looks pretty cool, I think. Okay, so I said we'd leave that, but that was so quick, I've just added that in. And finally, uh, there's one bug, which again, I'm aware of, and we will be fixing. It's kind of a hacky way to fix this. So what I wanted to do is see if any of you guys out there have experienced this in the past, if you know why this is happening. It seems like a very kind of specific Unreal quirk. I've done very similar logic in other engines and this has worked perfectly. There's no reason I can see this is happening, but in Unreal it just decides to add a weird offset. So what I mean by this is if we press play, we can see that if we pause this quickly, eject, uh, all of the tiles are actually lined up perfectly. So we've got the exact distance of each tile between the next one. So we can see that the the values are, are kind of working perfect here. Now, if we leave this to run a bit longer, as soon as the first cube, which is being recycled, goes to the back of the queue, there's a weird offset being applied and it only happens to the very first cube. Every other cube afterwards is gonna line up perfectly fine again. Um, and this is why I can't quite understand what's happening. There's so many things I've debugged to try and figure this out. Uh, you would assume if it was like a weird teleporting thing or an overlap or a collision trying to move itself, it would happen on all of the cubes, but it's only happening on the first cube that was spawned. And the distance as well is relative to the speed that the level's move moving. So if the level's moving faster than the, 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 the hole which is created, the gap between them is going to be bigger. So I'll just resume this and we'll watch what happens. We'll press pause. It doesn't seem to have happened this time. So between me prototyping this maybe, it's been fixed. Maybe it was a weird quirk, uh, but it's quite visible. If it does happen, you can see a gray line on the floor appearing. So I've just been letting it play in the background to see if it happens again. I think I might have just noticed it there. There we go. So just find it here. So we can see that there's now this, this gap between these two tiles. So this is tile one. Like I said, it's, it always seems to happen on the first tile when it gets uh, set back around. And this is tile five. So one is the first one that spawned, five is the last one. And like I said, there's always this weird gap. So we're gonna do some stuff to kind of offset this. If the first tile is the one being moved, then we're gonna do some specific logic to kind of remove that gap. But like I mentioned, it's a very hacky way to do it. Um, it's very specific and I don't think this scenario should even be happening. Um, there's no reason I can see that the first tile wouldn't be able to get the exact location of the rear tile like every other tile does and then move itself into position. So like I mentioned, just kind of an offside. Uh, if anyone is familiar with this kind of approach to things or just the maths behind why this might be happening, which I've missed, please, please do let me know uh, because this has been bugging me and I've tried every other approach to, to solve this. Even doing things like uh, destroying tiles and respawning them instead of reusing them doesn't seem to fix the problem. So it doesn't seem to be a set actor location issue. So something very strange is going on here. So for now though, I'm gonna leave that video here. As always, if you enjoyed these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.